Hey guys, a uh, very quick one today where we look at how to make streams uh, that you can use to have like water flowing down surface or you know whatever something like that. So uh, the basic idea is that we are going to be using the find shortest path and um, make a field from that which is going to make the, pa the particles stick to these trajectories and then flow down. So. Uh, to start, I have the surface and I have some alterations to the uh, yeah, mountain. Uh, and then to be able to make the shortest path go in a way which is a bit more interesting. So, you know, if I just run it as it is, it does something like this. Um, I have the points at the top and I have points at the bottom and they just down, run down on pretty much straight line um, as as much as they uh, turn around only as much as it's necessary to um, go around the... they don't go around obstacles, so basically they pretty much go straight uh, down. But then if you <coughs> add a, stand, a cost attribute which is making the uphill uh, going uphill a little bit harder than going downhill, then you get uh, like a naturalistic streams. So to do the <coughs> to get this attribute, what I do here is something very simple that I get the um, relative bounding box position. Let me just pull up the sheet and I use the y the elevation basically to uh, run a cost. So in the start here, I do not have the whole thing uh, tilted downwards, it's still flat. So I just use the y of the point, uh, the height of the point, to uh, decide what the cost of the uh, of going in this direction will be. So this is basically that going upwards would be more costly than going downwards or staying at the same at the same height. And um, uh, you can do that in many different ways, like if you have a completely flat surface, you can just create this with an attribute noise or project it from somewhere, all of this would work. So uh, then I tilt it downwards and I want to create the emission points. So I have a, a random uh, attribute that I call filter, which I'm going to use to filter the emission points. And uh, this emission will eventually uh, uh, and, and, and the endpoints, so this uh, look like that. So to get these, I just um, first I offset them just a little bit, so you know I don't have them on the edges exactly, and and I remove the geometry, just leave the points. So I here uh, <coughs> reduce uh, the amount, and then um, I use the relative uh, z position to get the tops and the bottoms uh, and I use the tops for starts and the bottoms for ends uh, then uh, yeah and this is gonna be the thing that I feed into short path so I have the tops there and the ends there and in short path I just use the cost point attribute to uh, assign point cost then I polywire these, so the next step would be to uh, create that field and uh, using PDB from polys, I first create a distance field, um, surface field from these uh, from the polywires and then I um, use VDB analysis to get the gradient of that field. Because the surface field would in itself only contain the information about uh, how far uh, voxel is to the surface, the gradient is going to give me the direction that I need for the course. Um, the only thing, other thing I have is that I have the um, emitter of the points here because eventually I'm going to run points down uh, this surface. So um, all I do here is to just leave the points at the top and to jitter them around a little bit because I want to emit from different seed uh, all the time. So moving into the dot network, I have a source emitting from these points that we just uh, mentioned, and the yep, sorry, caching. I have some pre-roll, um, and uh, there is a 
velocity uh, over the by, by volume that I update the force with. And I use force and not velocity because I just want to overlay some other things on top, some gravity, some uh, turbulence, because you might have noticed that in the uh, field that I just made, um, these are only pulling uh, towards the center of the line. These are not pulling downwards. So to pull downwards, I use um, additional force. And usually, you know, when you use the forces, it allows you to build uh, different uh, influences and uh, create some more complex behaviors. So um, the interesting thing is that, you know, if you just use the velocity scale, you know, set it to, us, to one number, then um, points would behave quite, quite uniformly. Uh, they will all stick to the center. Uh, they f will form a single line. So what I have done is that I have um, assigned a random value between uh, 0.1 and let's see, uh, between 0.3 and point. I wanted to make this one maybe. Uh, so uh, the idea is that they will stick, uh, you know, with a varying strength to the, to the ghost field. So if you so you have some that are sticking quite loosely and others that are sticking quite closely, and if you make these uh, very quite widely, so I have obviously way too much force now because I have noticed that my fit was being wrong. Um, you could make them stick more or less uh, to the field. And this will uh, give you sharper or looser streams. So this would make the streams quite loose, obviously. Maybe a bit too loose. Especially if you have an error. Uh, between from zero to one, and then point one, two, one. So this is making them quite loose and you can see that um, some at the top and, and some here in the middle I do miss. So you might want to increase that, uh, that value. But that's basically how it works. So then well, I have pop drag uh, because usually when you do with forces and uh, you are well off with some drag that will um, limit their uh, you know, velocities and have a gravity and some turbulence on top just to make things a little bit more interesting. Um, I kill them when they reach the bottom and that's basically it. You know, uh, when I leave the uh, dot network, I just color them. I move them up just a little bit because I want to merge them with the geometry underneath. And you could do stuff like um, project the particles which are here underneath on the surface and things like that but you know that's option so yeah um, just to recap it's quite handy to use the shortest path uh, to create these kind of uh, effects and um, adding the uh, cost attribute from something like an elevation or an arbitrary random is uh, letting you create more interesting effects uh, in, in this case, the elevation is uh, quite, giving quite a naturalistic effect because that would water would do basically, you know, in a very simplified uh, way. And using that, uh, creating, uh, using that as a source for the velocity field uh, that is deriving from uh, the degree from um, an SDF, and the analysis of that, the gradient of the distance is something that you can plug into. Uh, pop simulation uh, with pop advect by volumes and some gravity to create the particles settling down the, water, the, the, the hill and some additional turbulence is giving them a, bit, a, little, a little bit more interest. Thank you and see you next time.